What up, Interverse? Josh here from Polymathics, the YouTube channel that helps you become a modern day renaissance man. And today we're here to talk about a very interesting topic regarding critical thinking. But before we do, I have a question. How many of you guys have ever watched a movie, read a book, heard a song, and it just stuck with you for a long time? And you weren't really sure why. And then maybe years go on down the road and then you, you see it again or you hear it again and, and you're like, oh, now I understand why it was so important. There was a theme, there was a message behind it that I just didn't, I didn't quite, couldn't put it into words back in the day, but now I get it. Or maybe there's a story or book or song that like bothers you because there's something out of place there. And if it was up to you, you would have done it better. Well, th the thing is, that is greatly tied into our critical thinking abilities. And for those of you who are familiar with my channel, you know that one of the key elements of the polymath paradigm is the ability for one to take connections from subjects that don't seem to be related and link them together in a way that nobody has seen before. That is one of the the greatest skills that a polymath can cultivate and we see it throughout all history and even in the present that all the great Renaissance men had that ability, the ability to connect the dots, so to speak. And that all comes from critical thinking. So today what I wanted to talk about in particular is critical approaches to literature because I think that when we when we bring it down to the bare bones of that approach what we can do is we can find steps that we can follow that we can apply not just to literature but almost any aspect of our life and find things that are gonna not just give us a deeper understanding of the work that we're looking at but also a deeper understanding of how the implications that it has on our lives in general and, and, and the interactions between everything in the cosmos. So, pardon me, I have something in my eye. So let's get right down to it. The first phase that one goes through in critical approaches to literature, phase one, it's the surface level. So, and actually, let me back up real quick. There's even like a phase zero. This isn't taught formally, but phase zero is normally where most people are when they read a story, watch a, fi watch a film, uh, listen to a song. And that is the who, what, where, when, and why. Who are the characters? What major challenges are they facing? Why are they doing it? And it's all about entertainment, right? And even though you may learn a lesson from that, it's, it's a very passive way of learning it's not it's not done on purpose and you go away not getting the full view of the work the first level though level one the true level is where we see most critics and reviews come uh, most critics and in reviews from major sites and in magazines come from which is all of the stuff in level one, who, what, where, when, why, but also things like who was the author? What kind of person were they? How old were they? What, what challenges were they facing in their life? And what was the political environment of that time? How did that affect what the writer wrote? What, was the, what did the writer say that the intention of the work was? All of these things come into play. So when we look at something like Lord of the Rings with J.R.R. Tolkien and what was going on at that time where he felt that there wasn't a modern fantasy, a modern mythology for his <clears throat> for for the western world, he he decided that he wanted to make that. And so that is a level 1 observation. 
Level two, on the other hand, is the what's called the deconstruction phase. And what we do in level two is we deconstruct the story or the content in several different ways. First, we look at it from, uh, well, in, in the very strictest sense of critical approaches to literature, they'll look at it from certain points of view, like the psychology lens. What would Freud say about how this work was, was written? You know, what, what character, what does the character Ophelia um, represent? both in the story and to a person who's reading it and to the author in the psychology sense. What are the coping mechanisms? What, what are the, the, the ego and the id and the superego? What challenges are they facing and what is that supposed to represent to the person? Another lens that they might look at it from is something like feminism. How are women portrayed in the story? Are they portrayed as strong and confident and independent or are they weak and meager and dependent all of these different kinds of things now that's not to say and again this we're looking at things in a more broader sense so you could apply almost any lens you wanted to and the more appropriate the lens for that that you tailor that lens to whatever problem you're facing then the more you know the the juicier the material you'll get out of it, so to speak. But psychology and feminism are just two of the areas that critical approaches to literature really focuses on uh, in the in the course. The, th the other thing that you're going to look at in the deconstruction phase is what are the things that you didn't like about the story? What are the things that didn't make sense to you that you felt were weak. So for example, in um, in Shakespeare, I this is not my personal opinion, this was a professor of mine's opinion. Uh, he said he felt as though the relationship with, with, um, oh gosh, now with Hamlet and his mother was not very well fleshed out. And that they could have, that if she was indeed in cahoots with his stepfather, that they, that the writer Shakespeare could have flushed that out more to show her more villainous, or or the opposite is true as well. Now, I don't necessarily agree with that. In some cases, less is more. And in my opinion, I thought Shakespeare did a really masterful move there by leaving it open to interpretation, but. Again, that's a, that's this is not what the great part of the deconstruction phase compared to level one surface phase is that surface phase, like I said before, it's passive. When we get into deconstruction, now we're starting to be where we are interacting with the piece, right? We're deconstructing it. It's now dynamic. It's a dynamic interaction between you and the work. And therefore, you've created a relationship with the work which causes you to invest more of your mental energy in it. And again, this will get back to essentially you will understand the work better because you have engaged it on that level. So deconstruction. For me, uh, one of the things that I like to look at is the Star Wars prequels. They're, they don't, in my opinion, hold up to the original trilogy and when you look at the relationship between Obi-Wan, Padme, and, and Anakin, I believe that there was a prime opportunity for George Lucas to use the, the love triangle tool to create a, a great deal of tension and conflict and believable motives that have been used in great stories and withstood the, the test of time in terms of making a great story. 
And he even did that in the original trilogy with Han, Luke, and Leia. And initially, there was a little love triangle going on there. And it made for a, like an underlying conflict. And anyways, I could go on and on for days about that. But that's the point. You deconstruct and you, you find the things that you don't like about the story. Things that seem weak. Seems holes in the plot. Things that could have been fleshed out more. The, the other thing that you want to look at is taboos. What taboos are not being spoken about in the story, the song, the poem, whatever it might be? What are the things, the dirty little secrets behind closed doors that nobody wants to talk about with regard to this story? For example, in, in the Humphrey Bogart movie, this is I'm, can't, Casablanca. I can't believe I forgot that. In Casablanca, you know, we go through this whole town of kind of smugglers and, and it's going through the World War and there's this whole backdrop. But what we don't see is what's going on with the children and, and, and thing, you know, what about all the other people that aren't part of this little community? What goes on there? They don't really touch on that. They don't touch on that kind of even uglier aspect of that time period. And so that would be considered a taboo. The, there's also the taboo between the relationship, if we go back to Hamlet, the relationship between Hamlet and his mom. What's going on there? Some people have speculated. Uh, also Hamlet and uh, Hamlet's stepfather and his mom. If they truly were in cahoots, then what kind of person does that make both the stepfather and the mother for having colluded against Hamlet's father and, and murdered him? So that's the deconstruction phase. Finding things that don't make sense and kind of tearing the story down. Now the third phase is, this is the most dynamic phase. This is the creation phase, which is reconstruction phase, phase three. And this is where you get to sit down and say, if I had the creative license to totally remake all the parts that I didn't like, how would I write that story? How would I make that story better? What would, what would be most satisfying to me? And this is great for a couple different reasons. On a personal level, again, it's going to allow you to interact with the story on a much deeper, deeper, intimate level and you're going to understand the story much better and the other thing is that from a writer's perspective if you're someone who is a creative a writer and off uh, uh, like of any of those things songs poems even art if you're an artist even when you're looking at a piece of art a piece of art is telling a story and this is what I'm saying like pardon me for the camera that there's multiple aspects in our lives that we can use this critical approach for. But the, the, the question you then ask yourself is, how would I reconstruct it? And from that, you get your own story and there's a bit of a catharsis that happens between you and that story. Because now all of the, the things that were left undone, you now get to have closure for. But moreover, if you are a creative type, what you can do is then take the template of the old story and put yours on top of it and create a whole new story based on that. And what that does is one, that, that that story is now tailored to you, you and you alone. And so it's something very personal. But secondly, it will stay with you. And you're going to see how the story, not just the who, what, when, where, why entertainment value at level zero, but now at level three, what you're seeing is how does the story relate, not just to the real world, but to your life? How does it relate to you on that most intimate level where you would change things and make things better? And now let's take a look at how we approach problems. Critical thinking is best used when approaching big problems. And so if we take this kind of methodology and we look at the problems that we face in our lives, well, now we have a way to really get down to the meat 
of what a problem is and how we would fix it and why it's important for our own lives. And so I guess in closing, I would say play around with this for a little, for a little while. Think about all of these different aspects and how you could use them in the real world, both on a small and larger scale. I'm not going to lie, when I when I look at stories because I am a writer, the first time through, I try to go at that level zero, entertainment value, just let me have fun with it kind of mentality. But if it's something that I want to look into more and possibly incorporate into my works, then what I do is I take this critical approach and I, and I look at it with a very fine tooth comb and try to think of all the things that I would tear down, all the things that I would build back up. And how if I were to rewrite a story like that, or a song, or a poem, or a piece of art, how would I do it better in that, that depicted my own voice? And, um, and then lastly, again, like I said, this isn't just for creatives though, this is just how you face everyday problems because every experience you have in life has, has a story behind it, a lesson to be learned. Every failure you face, is a story that's waiting for you to explore it using this critical approach. Every person you meet, if you truly invest your time in them, has a story like this to tell. And the more we invest in those people, in those experiences, in those stories, and we take this critical approach, the more we're going to enrich their lives, but they are going to enrich ours. And we're going to have a very solid connection and be able to think critically about what's going on and the relevant aspects of everything related to those problems, those people, those stories, if we take this approach. So hopefully you guys have found a bit of this information helpful. And if you have, please give me a like. And if you'd like to hear more information like this, then please feel fear. Please feel free to subscribe. But until next time, for all of you writers out there, just keep in mind when it comes to story, you're never wrong if you just write. Till next time, take it easy.